Hello. So in this episode, I would like to talk about a quite not really well-known Rails feature named config4 that lets you set uh, different default uh, environmental variables in your Ruby on Rails application. So there also exists a quite popular gem named config and this Rails config4 does a very, very similar thing. Basically, you can create a YML file inside your config folder where you will keep any defaults for your application. So let's see how it works and how you can use it in a real application. Now here I have a default uh, a boilerplate Ruby on Rails application where we have well some posts and we have the name of the application here and in the uh, title of the application. And you see they're quite different. So in the header and in the title. And what if we want to have a place from which we fetch uh, these two names so that they are the same. Now, at the moment, if we go to app, uh, application HTML.erb, here we have the title and here in the navbar, we have the cprails.com verbs. So we want to get these from somewhere. We will get them from our config. Now, first of all, we will create a config file. So you see, we can name it any way, but we will name it something like settings.yml. So we are going to go to our config and here we are going to create a file. Now you can do it physically or you can go to the console and uh, type something like touch config slash settings.yml and this will basically create uh, a file inside such a directory. So I said touch and it has created the settings.yml. Now inside the settings.yml everything is by default scoped to the current environment. So you have uh, production, you have development, and you can have uh, shared uh, environmental settings. So shared. Now let's uh, try to see how it works. So for example, inside shared, we will uh, have the app name and the app name will be super rails. And uh, then we will also have uh, something like uh, uh, just name in development, let's say super rails dev and we'll have uh, a name in production. It will be Super Rails Pro. Okay, and how can we fetch any of these uh, values? Well, we can go to our console, Rails console, and say Rails dot, uh, let's see what it says, Rails dot application dot config for. Then the name of the file, in our case, it is settings. And inside we will get uh, any of the values. Let's just try settings. So here we have the everything that we have in the file. We have the app name and the name. Well, the ones that are available for the current environment. We got uh, the name from the development and we got app name from shared because it is available across the environments. We did not get this uh, uh, pro because it is scoped on the production, okay? And let's try to go and get the name or the app name. Let's say dot dig name. And you see if we get the name Super Rails Dev. But if I did this inside the production environment, like in Heroku, for example, it will get Super Rails Pro because it would be scoped under the production environment. And if we get the app name, we get this other Super Rails. So we can use these environmental variables inside our views. Now let's do this. Let's go to our title and use the environmental variable here and also in the navbar like this. And let's stop our console and start the server and see if it works. So I'm refreshing and here you see we have super rails here and super rails here. Let's use the app name. So we'll say not app name, but just name like this and see. And here we get Super Rails Dev. And here we will also get, uh, let's see. Here we also get Super Rails Dev. So this way we can uh, change the name of the application just in settings. Like uh, let's add a two in the end and restart the server because we have to say change something inside our settings. And you see we have this two both here and both here. So this is kind of a more sustainable way of uh, uh, having kind of uh, default texts uh, saved somewhere. Basically, instead of uh, updating this same text everywhere around your views, you can just have uh, it called uh, from a uh, uh, settings, like settings.name, and uh, edit it in the settings. So, looks quite good. Now, uh, 
let's actually go to another option. So for example, we have uh, a list of posts, right? And what if a post has to belong to a category? Now we have two options. For example, there are uh, categories and a category would have many posts and the post would have a category ID. So we would have one more database table uh, with a list of categories that we can edit, uh, delete or create. But what if we have just a very small set of categories like um, we don't plan to edit, to delete, or to add uh, new categories, and we don't want to keep them in the database. Well, we can also keep the list of categories inside the, inside our settings. But first of all, let's uh, have a look how we can do it. So first of all, we will uh, possibly add a category uh, field to our posts. So let's say Rails generate migration, uh, add category to posts category stream okay let's have a look at our migration go into db migrate and we add category to posts okay rails db migrate and let's whitelist the category so i'm going to our posts controller i will add category and go into our posts show i will also add category Post.category and most importantly in our post form, I will also add a field for category. Okay, and it's going to be not a text area, it's going to be a text field first of all. Let's have a look. I'm going to post. Now I'm going to start the server. I'm going to create a new post and here we can input a category but we need to have some kind of collection. So the available categories. Now we can just do it as a form dot select and we will have a collection of categories like uh, uh, sports and music. Okay, let's see if it works. Now you see we can select sports or music, but we have no blank value. So let's say something like uh, include blank true i refresh and how, here we have also an option for a blank value so we select sports title and here we have the category saved as sports but also we can have the select not only as uh, 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 as sports or music we can have uh, sports or music set as a label but a value that would be saved in the database would be different so for the uh, label sports we would save something like S uh, to the database, for example. Or we can have like sports and uh, outdoors. And we will save it as sports. And for music, we will say music is the label or music and uh, culture is the label. And the value that we will save in the database will be just music. Okay, and I will close these gaps. And let's see if it works. So I refresh, I'm going to edit, and you see we don't have this select uh, by default for sports because we have changed uh, the label and the value. But now we have sports and outdoors and music and culture. If it's like music and culture, you see the value that was saved in the database is music. I'm going to edit and it is uh, the same. But again, it is not really cool to keep uh, all these kind of business logics inside our views. We can just have this all inside our settings. So how should we do this? Well, here we have our settings via ML and we have this shared example. And inside the shared example, we can have uh, something like uh, post categories. And inside of post categories, we would have uh, a value named sports and the label would be sports and outdoors and a value named music with a label music and culture okay and now how do we get the, the list of uh, post categories well we would go to our form i will uh, hide this okay let me see if i hit it yeah, I did. And I will create another select. But here we are going to get uh, 
it from our settings. So how will we get it from our settings? Well, the same way as we did here, we will go to Rails, Application Config for Settings, Dig, and we're going to dig something. So we will dig into post categories. Okay, and let's see if this works. So going back, I'm going to edit, and yeah, we have the options to select sports and music. Now, let's try to select something like sports. So we selected the uh, sports as the label, or as the value, but you see the value that was saved is sports and outdoors. So it's not really cool. We want it to be actually vice versa. So to make it vice versa, we would say something like, we would turn it to uh, hash, then we would uh, invert it and turn it back to an array. Let's see if it works. I'm going back and I'm going to edit this. So I will select a category, let's say sports and outdoors. I update the post and the value that was saved is sports. I'm going back, you see I have it selected. And the cool thing is that if we change one of these uh, labels, so let's say sports, uh, outdoors, uh, comma, running. Okay, if I change this, uh, uh, label and uh, yeah of course I will need to restart the server now because I've done some changes inside uh, our config oh actually no I didn't have to do it yeah that's interesting so I didn't have to restart the server and you see I have uh, changed uh, the label and the value stays the same so makes sense and uh, works and this way you can use uh, config uh, uh, for and settings VML to set different uh, default lists and default variables. So you can set something to true. You can add some kind of default business address, uh, default bank uh, account number, default emails, application name, and so on. So it is a really powerful tool and I really recommend using it in your Ruby on Rails application. So I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, goodbye.